So, hi, Bernard. Hi, Krasten. What do we do now? Yeah, this one should be a shorter one, um, and we try to do it fast. It will be a simple deployment. Um, so we are not explaining too much, but we will create a, a AVD host pool and uh, you know show the, demonstrate the deployment, right? But the details will follow in subsequent videos. Okay, so let me maybe just bring up one screenshot, which is this one. This is of your cluster as it was you know, half an hour ago, right? Um, it was a vanilla install. Um, and this is how it looks like, right? And as you could see in the middle, it says um, Azure Virtual Desktop prerequisites not met. What we did in the meantime was um, we created um, the resources that are required, that this one goes in green, right? Um, and I think you know we will show what we did uh, in subsequent videos, right? It's not so yes. much really, um, but um, you may you know grab the screen and uh, switch it over just to demonstrate that um, to the folks that this one is in green now, right? Um, and now the uh, deploy button goes to lights up and you can press it. Um, mm -hmm. So we can only tell the people what we have done. So we yeah. have downloaded an image from the Azure Marketplace. So we have mm -hmm. uh, an, a, a, an image with a, a, a multi-session host in it that we use for our quick deployment. Mm -hmm. And we had to create a logical network. Correct. As you said, in later videos, we will talk in detail about all these resources. So mm -hmm. I just okay. click the deployment button. Mm -hmm. I have to sign in again. Mm -hmm. And you could reach that dialogue from two ends, right? So this is uh, this was the way from the Azure Stack HCI cluster. But uh, when you came, when you you could have also created or started from Azure Virtual Desktop to get the exact same uh, same wizard, if you wish, right? Uh, and we will see that. But let's you know kick it off. So that's the regular um, host pool creation wizard. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I I choose a resource group. You saw yeah. I have multiple resource groups. We right. uh, have to name. So first I will switch the location to West Europe here. Mm -hmm. um, the host pool name, I uh, wrote it down because we discussed <laughs> our naming strategy, right? Yeah. And this is, of course, individual, uh, has to fit your organization, your size and what you want to do. But mm -hmm. Bennett and I said we name our host pool HP for host pool. Then we have our location. We will have two clusters. So we have two mm -hmm. locations and we should uh, have a differentiation between the host pools. And then we will deploy a host pool for desktops, not mm -hmm. for applications, for desktops. Yeah. So then here you see what we do. We do desktops, not remote mm -hmm. apps. And yep. host pool type will be pooled. We will talk mm -hmm. about this stuff that he asks here later. So breath first, I choose 16 mm -hmm. um, users per node because as this was our calculation example. Oh, 16 users per session host, okay, per, session host, per exactly. desktop. Okay. So, yep. and now it asks us on the next screen, do you, do you want to create virtual machines? Of course, that's, we, want to, yep. we want to create some machines. So mm -hmm. I click yes here and now, Resource mm -hmm. group, name prefix. Mm -hmm. So for the name prefix, um, you have to be very short. There are only eleven characters allowed, right. and it will it will add also a numbering on the end. And Bernard yep. explained me because I I was saying why only eleven characters, Bernard? Why is that? Yeah, because the compute the computer name, the NetBIOS name, is derived from this one, uh, and we yeah. also do have you know the numbering. So if we would create ten desktops, you know we need to have the space for number ten. Yeah. Um, so this is just a prefix. Okay, so now you have Azure Stack, uh, Azure Virtual Machine, or an Azure Stack. Um, uh, uh, or should it be placed on Azure Stack HCI? Exactly. Um, but Carson is currently, you know, selecting the virtual machine location to West Europe. That doesn't mean that, you know, that the cluster is really physically in West Europe, right? Well, it is, but, you know, it is not West Europe as Azure data center in Amsterdam. It is, you know, your location. However, the virtual machine artifact is 
in Amsterdam. So there is a sort of digital uh, clone or digital representative of, of the virtual machine that is on yeah. your ATIs there. Yeah, this okay. this is a little bit of a bug, right? So uh, if we don't change it, our resources would be in, uh, I think, in East US, but the mm. machines are not. So I switch it here to West Europe, and then we go to Azure, Azure Stack HCI virtual machines because we don't want to create the machines in Azure. We could do that, but we want to create them on the cluster that is here in Hallenberg. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we check that, and now he wants to have a custom location. And we will talk mm. about a custom location later, but you see here, mm. I have in the moment two. And this is the custom mm. location of our cluster we are deploying to. It's called, uh, this is a short form of Hallenberg, and that's mm. the cluster name. So mm -hmm. now he knows the cluster where mm -hmm. the virtual machine should be created and we can select an image. And we told you we have already downloaded an image because that takes half an hour uh, approximately with my internet connection. If you have a faster one, it's shorter. If you have a slower one, it's maybe taking one hour or even more. So we named it appropriately and we choose that. Mm -hmm. Now he wants to know which security type we only have standard in the moment. There is also something with trusted, uh, but we don't have that. And he asked us how many VMs do we want to deploy? And in our example, there were 10, right? For the 160 users, 10 machines with 16 users each, so 10. We can specify how many virtual processors each machine should have. We choose eight. And I think it was 16 gigabytes in the example. Right. The how was it called the maximum node or so or where a lot of users the heavy the heavy the heavy, the heavy. it's okay. not but, so heavy know, in my it, opinion but that's uh, discussable right neither so yeah. here we have to choose a network because mm -hmm. these machines have to communicate with active directory with azure and so on and mm -hmm. we prepared that in advance we will talk about that in another video mm -hmm. then the vms should be joined to an active directory um, need. They need for that to be we need the user that can mm -hmm. do that, right? So yep. we choose one of those users, admin mm -hmm. one, and I have to give the password. Okay. I also specify the domain separately. And you see uh -huh. here that the AD domain has two names it's powercourse.local. And we have also powercourse.net because local you can't use in the internet. No? Okay. And I specified an uh, organizational unit. We will talk mm -hmm. about that later. On this uh, organizational unit, we can do group policies and active directories and so on. That's helpful later. No? Mm -hmm. And we also need a local administrator and we are not allowed to use administrator. So you have to have another name for your local administrator. And I give a... Yeah, that's an Azure speciality, if you wish, right? So administrator is a common attack vector. That's why we don't usually allow that uh, in Azure, right? Or for Azure virtual machines. And we um, tend to follow this um, concept also for VMs that are on-prem. So on the next part of the wizard, we can register desktop, uh, desktop app group. And we want to do that. So mm -hmm. let's get rid of this one. Mm -hmm. And for this, we also, we create one. We didn't, we haven't done this. So here mm -hmm. is our name. Okay. So this is for workspace. Then we have our custom location name. We have a mm -hmm. site A, and this is the first one in that site. And this naming will be much clearer if we go deeper into the <laughs> sessions. Yeah, so we now just skip it and take it as it is. So Hopefully, but you know, uh, the users, we, we will present maybe later the user a much more friendly name uh, than this one, right? This is for yeah, the Azure resource, but uh, you can change that with visualization for the user. Okay. Then uh, we don't enable diagnostic settings because I don't yeah. have a log analytics workspace yet. We Let's can do, do that, that later, right? In a yeah. later video as well. So, um, and tagging, we mm -hmm. will talk about tagging maybe in a later video. In the moment, right. we don't use any tags here. We want to do a quick mm -hmm. installation, not. Yeah. Not, 
So I will now, talk about the tags if you fire it off, right? Oh, yeah. As we do have some time. Okay. So see here, I mean, you have, you pressed the create button, um, but there was the download a template for automation thing, yes. right? So as with any other Azure resource, um, there is the, um, the Azure resource manager behind of this, right? So this is only a remote control of REST services call. Um, and, you know, our Azure management pane, the Azure resource manager is able to talk to either the portal or, you know, to PowerShell or, you know, other automation or command line tools that you could use to automate the whole stuff. Um, and that could help you to, you know, to do that fully automated, um, um, if you will. Okay, so, if so I would let me deploy workspaces yeah. every day. I would have an ARM yeah. template and modify right. it, of course. Yeah. yeah, or you know, if you may need to test things and you have a, a, a DevOps pipeline where you you know spin up a host pool, bring your applications in, test them, and then then um, you know delete them one more time. That could be fully automated. But yeah. um, tags, right? As you have seen in the wizard that we are somehow limited sometimes in the number of characters that we can enter, especially for the computer names, something like that, for example, right? Um, so it is sometimes missing some really valuable information, if especially if you need to troubleshoot things. Um, and that can be deal dealt with tags, right? So tags are key value pairs. You can do up your own, right? So I could, you know, bring up um, maybe I want to know the version of the template that I was using, or maybe you want to tag these desktops with a cost center ID for billing purposes later on, for example, or you may want to know what is inside there or what is the purpose or what is the security status or, you know, what, whatever, right? I mean, then you can work with, uh, with tags. Mm -hmm. Okay. Regarding this, um, you see that there are multiple things done here, right? Um, and as this is a quite a beefy wizard, uh, which I would say, right? Um, it creates quite some resources. It creates the host pool, the application groups, and then it launches up other stuff. So this is a, you know, like a master child, child, child deployment uh, template that we have here, right? Um, and some things can run in parallel, some things can need to run sequentially, um, but most of the time you are, uh, you're spending in the add VM linked template uh, kind of deployment here, right? So if you would click on the add VM linked template uh, hyperlink, yes. You should see that there will be some things, right? Um, and here is the parallelism that I was talking about, right? So the things in green are already done. The other ones in blue, right, are running at the moment in parallel. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, now it is time for a coffee break, I would say, uh, right? Because um, this can take some time because some virtual machines need to be created on your cluster. Uh, that means you have selected one image that needs to be copied to 10 locations, right? Um, mm -hmm. For 10 virtual machines. And then these 10 virtual machines need to be switched on. Um, personalization occurs. Um, you know, the, the, the OS is boots up. Uh, they will get IP addresses. Um, and then other things happen, like, for example, agents will be installed, domain join will be done. Um, but that's, you know, something that will happen throughout this video. Yeah, what would you think if we, uh, we uh, pause the video here and um, mm -hmm. maybe we decided to do 10 VMs? So mm -hmm. uh, the image is 100. 27 uh, gigabytes that alone uh, is copying 1.2 terabytes so we could uh, pause the video here or we show the results in the next one yeah i will probably you know cut or fast forward this video in editing so you know be aware that there is might be a, a certain uh switch uh, in screens okay so it Seems to have finished. Uh, yes, I like so, your deployment is complete. I love it. So yes, so if you would expand it, let's let's just expand it for a second, right? 
I mean, so there are uh, lots of stuff has happened. So the last thing was the Azure monitoring agent, which was installed. Uh, and then the the join domain was done domain before. Join work. And uh, there was a, extensions. yes. And the custom script extension step is the one that is actually performing the onboarding to the um, host pool. So if you would go to your Azure Virtual Desktop Management uh, view, right? So you can type in in the search window on top or you go, to, yes, uh, do it like this. You go to your host pool. Yeah. Yes, Let's... I go to my host pool, the DAG. No, no that but... was the uh, DAG. Go to the host that pool first, the wrong please. One. This one. Yeah, I, yeah, this is the number yeah. that I wanted to see, right? So 10 yes. machines there, all of them are ready to connect. Okay, now you can go back to your application group uh, because we want to, you know, sort of show. Oops. Um, it's a bit much here. So the application group is uh, this one, right? The uh, yes, this is the desktop application group. Application group, group yeah. Yeah. It was automatically created. Here's one application. All right. And I think yeah. I should assign a user, right? Or correct. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to do, right? Um, so, so there is none. Mm -hmm. Let's pick one. Let's say, for example, we have a Bernard Frank here, and yep. I just would add myself to. We do select. Right. Looks good. So yeah, wait. Now it's not here yet. Yeah, that should be now relative. Now we have fun. it. Yeah. Okay. So now, if you could switch to my screen, we then switch let's... to your screen, right? Yeah. Um, here we are. And as you could see, um, I was logging on as Bernard Frank before. However, you know, that was before you assigned me permission. So let's do a refresh here, right? So just do a refresh and see if I do have something available now. There it is, right? So that's a little bit ugly name, but we can change that later on, right? And this is the session desktop. So let me just change the settings so that I, you know, don't do it on all of my displays, right? I'm just selecting this one that should be viewable to you. And hopefully I have my password, password. still in the, my password still in the clipboard. <laughs> Let's see. You have. Yeah, and here you go. So. This is what we wanted to see, right? I mean, we are geographically um, how far apart? 500? 300 kilometers over the right. air. So right. this tower, so, maybe 400, 450. Right. So that would be, you know, like um, my connection is a little bit different, right? Um, we are doing UDP, which is good for for um, uh, for RD for RDP transmission, right? Mm -hmm. um, but however, you know, you could see it from the milliseconds. Um, we are going via the Azure backplane, um, and this is the distance or the latency that would be added to it. Um, but I am on your host, um, which is kind of nice uh, to be honest, right? As we could see yeah. here, that's the remote computer at the bottom. Um, yeah, that looks good. So mission accomplished. And in the subsequent videos, we are talking a little bit about um, activation and other stuff of these desktops and how to get there and how to modify them, right? So now we get to the beefy, gritty stuff. Okay. See you in the next one.